Well, good evening, saints. I'm just so excited to be with you this evening. Okay, I just want to let you know that it's a wonderful time and that I know that God is going to meet with us tonight. And so right now, I just want to just pray as you come online. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that as we come together around your word, Lord, that you are going to give us some insight and revelation as to what you have for us tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for each and every believer that is on the feet tonight. Lord, I pray that you're going to bless them, anoint them. And Lord, I just pray right now that you're going to meet each one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to just welcome you to this feed. And uh, I asked, uh, you know, if I could take the feed tonight. And I want to just say that we are busy with our school of prayer and I've interrupted it to deal with the com a combination of prayer and fasting for this weekend that's coming up. Okay, so I'm going to be dealing with the topic of prayer and I'm going to deal with the topic of fasting. Because there's a lot of people that have been asking me, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do this? All right, and how does this all fit together? So what I want to do tonight is this, is I want to deal with a little bit around the prayer issue. Okay, so I want to just explain the basics of our prayer initiatives. Let me tell you how it works. It's very simple. God has given man the authority on the earth. And only when man gives an instruction is excuse me, God able to move. God does not just move out of a sovereign God. He is waiting for the believers to give an instruction. The unsaved are not going to instruct in line with the word. And so as we instruct in line with the word, God then releases angels to come and fight for us. Because angels are only activated by scripture. Okay? According to Psalm, angels are only activated when the word of God is spoken. Now, if you don't have the word of God um, being proclaimed, angels literally are standing ready to perform it, but don't do anything. And so we've got to understand the concept that if we do not pray, God is not going to move. Now, it doesn't mean that God's not sovereign. It doesn't mean that he's not in control. But God has given that authority to mankind. And remember, Jesus Christ said that all authority has been given to him. And he never gave it over to the, uh, to the church. He says, in my name, you can use my authority, but you still have to pray and release it yourselves. So nowhere in scripture do we ever find that things are just going to happen. All right. Nowhere in scripture do we find that God just intervenes. There's always somebody who calls on the name of the Lord. That is why when God chose Israel, he says, I will be your God. You worship me. You call on me and I will fight for you. And I will defend you and I will do whatever you need. Now I'm going to tell you, it must have been an interesting time to live in that era where you actually had God verbally communicating with you and where you could actually see what God is doing all the time, like spectacularly, you know, pillar of fire and all of these things that are happening. But I want to say to you that even when people saw the actual God in action, they still did not accept anything. And so tonight I want us just to get ourselves prepared for this weekend. All right? Because it's important that we prepare ourselves in order to see the power of God move across our nation. Because God is looking for us to be able to activate the power of God across this nation. Now, I want to tell you right now, it's really important that we get this thing correct. It's really important that we do this thing right. All right, it's really critical that we get to the place where we say, God, we need you to intervene in our nation. Now, there is one thing to call, call on God when there is a crisis, and I'm not saying don't do that. 
But we can't just rely on when there is a crisis to call on God. We have to have a consistency and say, God, we make you our source and our only source. And God, we call on you on a daily basis as believers. Because when we do that, we are then going to be able to restrict the evil work in our nation. But we're also going to give God the authority and the permission to work across our nation. Now, I know that many of us are saved. Many of us love the Lord and many of us know about prayer. But this evening, I want to just challenge us and say, how often are we actually praying for our nation? Because while you are praying, you are restricting or stopping the evil work from operating. When you don't pray, the evil work just takes over. Now we can't have it like in COVID when there is a crisis, then suddenly everybody prays. We need to be praying on a daily basis. We need to be calling out on God on a daily basis for our nation. But when we get the body of Christ to stand together, there is a principle of one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand, and so and so on. And so I want to tell you, when the body of Christ as a nation comes in unity, the Bible says that nothing is impossible. But the question tonight is this. Are we prepared to go and proclaim what Jesus Christ has said? Are we actually going to start praying? It's one thing to know about how to pray. It's another thing to know what to pray. But the question is this. Are you going to practice it? The consistency is what I'm asking. Are you consistent in pulling down strongholds and allowing the Spirit of God to move? Now, when it comes to our nation, there is a battle. There is a battle for this nation. Why? Because it's the gateway into Africa. God has always promised that South Africa is the gateway into Africa. And so there are many nations that are fighting over our nation for simply because we're also at the bottom and we're part of the trade routes. <clears throat> and nobody wants to lose this nation to a foreign nation. So I want to tell you right now, our nation is strategically placed, but God is looking for the nation to be godly. God is looking for the men and women to stand up godly and say, God, we are going to fight for this nation. We are going to restrict any form of demonic or evil work that is taking place. Now I believe with all my heart that God has got something really special for each one of us. All right, God has got something really special for our nation and for each one of us. But we are going to have to learn how to constantly pray and pull down these strongholds. Because we cannot afford to be lax in this. And so we are going to sit down and pray. We are going to seek God. And we are going to call down heaven onto our earth. Now when you pray. I don't think we have a clue. On the power that is released when we pray. I want to recommend a book for you, uh, to you. And I don't often do this. But what I really enjoyed about this, and I don't read books, okay? This is probably one of, probably about one or two books that I've read outside of my studies, okay? There's a book called, by Frank Peretti, called This Present Darkness and Piercing This Darkness. Piercing the Darkness. Frank Peretti. If you can get your hands on those books, read it. Because what happens there, it's, it's a, it's a, a non-fiction book. Sorry, yeah, it's a fiction book. Okay? But what I found was that as he tells the story and he explains everything, then the experiences that he has in the spirit world is stuff that I've experienced. So I think he's pretty accurate to what's going on. But he describes how the angels move when the church prays. And he describes 
How that there's a war in the heavenlies as long as the church is praying. So I want to say this. If we want to see victory in our lives, we have got to understand the power of prayer. And when we come into a situation where there is a crisis, all right, where there is a crisis, we need to stand together as the body of Christ. And we need to say, in the name of Jesus, we reject this. We start by words and releasing what needs to be released. Now, what are some of the outcomes if we genuinely pray? Now, remember this, that it is a fight for the spirit realm. And when we restrict things and we all stand in agreement, I want to tell you something. Things are restricted in Jesus' name. All right, people are still asking for the books. Okay, this present darkness and piercing the darkness. But I want to say that when we pray, the demonic is restricted. But there is a fight. There is a fight. There is a battle for the control over our nation. And we need to know that we have the power to change it tonight. When we stand together as the body of Christ, I want to tell you right now, we are going to see supernatural things take place in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to give you just four reasons, you know, reasons or the results of prayer. When I pray, I want to tell you what happens. Number one, God answers. James chapter 4 verse 2 says that God answers the prayers of the saints. Now why does God answer the prayers? If we ask God to intervene, does He come because He likes us? No. He comes because we've given Him permission to intervene. We have given Him the authority to go and do something in the problem that we are facing. And so God's going to answer our prayers. God is going to move by His Spirit in our nation and in our situation. Number two, the results of praise is that you get built up. In Jude chapter 1 verse 20, you're going to build yourself up in your most holy faith when you pray. When you pray, you start getting strong spiritually. You see, I think one of the biggest things that we need to understand is the more we pray the more power we will release. I want to make a statement. I want you to write this down somewhere. Much prayer equals much power. Much prayer equals much power. Little prayer equals little power. If you want to get to a level where the power of God is flowing through your life, you need to pray. And the more you pray, the more the power of God is going to be made manifest in your life. And so we need to know that when we pray, it keeps me in this power. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 and 1 Corinthians 14.18. And as we pray, the power is built up. We are staying constantly in the power. And we will see the miracles take place. I believe that if the body of Christ could come together right across the board, I believe that we could sort out all of these issues in three days. Janine said this from the beginning. She said, Arthur, if we could get the body of Christ right across South Africa, every denomination, every single believer, everyone, to sit down and pray in unity together. Within three days we would have sorted COVID out. You say, how is that possible? If Esther could turn an entire nation around in three days because the, because the nation fasted and prayed. God can do the same again. 
The problem that we are facing is that too many Christians are doing their own thing. Too many Christians are too busy with their own thing. I want to tell you right now, we're going to need to start stepping up. And we're going to start pushing in. And we are going to start standing in agreement to start turning what Satan is trying to do in our nations. Because I know that God has got something supernatural for us. And then the fourth thing that it does is it keeps us in Christ. It keeps us focused in Jesus Christ. It keeps us connected with Jesus Christ. And it keeps us in a place where we are going to see the power of God. And so when we sit down and say we are going to pray. I want you to get this idea. That as we speak the word. That angels are busy fighting as we release the word. When we stand in unity, when we stand in agreement, we are going to see the power of God move. And so this weekend, that is the first step that I'm looking for. I'm looking for men and women who are going to stand together and who are going to say, come, let's go make a difference in Jesus' name. Now, whenever you see that there was something serious going on, you will always see that they would pray and they would fast. It was like, remember when Peter and them were in prison and they prayed and fasted right through the night for them. All right, there's many times in the Bible where you see people fasting. So I want to deal a few minutes around the issue of fasting. The first thing I want to say is this, and many people have been asking me this. When we call for a fast, what are we fasting? What are we, are we uh, saying? Do we cut all our food and water, our food and, and drink, and we just drink water? Is it, a, is it a vegetable thing only? How do we fast? Right? My answer to that is this. Find something that you can give up so that you can use that time in prayer. So some of us are going to fast food. Because the meal times you take and you go pray in the time that you eat. Alright? Some of us are going to sit down and some of us can't fast food. So then you fast TV for the weekend. Whatever it is that you give up, you say, God, I'm giving this up so that I can have time to pray. So what are we expecting you to do this weekend? We are expecting you to give up something. We are expecting you to decide and say, God, this is my fast. I'm going to lay this aside for the weekend and I'm going to seek you and I'm going to trust God. All right, somebody put on screen marshmallows. Let me tell you something. I will gladly say set aside marshmallows if I can see the power of God in our nation. But take something that takes some time out of your day. And say, God, I'm going to set it aside. It might be a golf game. It might be a fishing thing that you used to do on Saturdays. Whatever it is. And say, God, I'm going to fast this this weekend because I want to seek you. Okay, people are saying that they're going to fast on cell phones, from cell phones. Great, just make sure that you get the feed. Okay, we don't need you to do that. But what happens when I start fasting? What literally happens is I'm bringing my flesh under subjection to my spirit. And I'm saying my flesh, my soul, my natural way of thinking, what I want, what I feel, you know, that area of my body has to come under submission to the Spirit of God. And so I want to tell you right now, as we come and we seek God together, and we take that time to ask God, God is going to move by His Spirit. Now I'm going to give you eight reasons for fasting. Why would I fast? All right. To strengthen our ability to turn our attention to the Lord. 
It strengthens us. We are now focused on putting our time and effort on God. In Daniel chapter 9, 1 to 3. I'm not going to read the scriptures now. When facing a great challenge or obstacle in 2 Chronicles 20, 1 to 4. We are facing an obstacle in our nation. So therefore I've called for a national prayer and fast. And we are going to fast and we are going to pray and we are going to believe God for supernatural things this weekend. To be receptive to direction and wisdom from God. In Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. And in Acts chapter 14, 23. In other words, that we know and say, God, give us the direction and give us the wisdom. What must we do next? When you're fasting, your mind and that settles and your spirit man starts taking over. And it's easy for you to hear what God really wants. It is for us to strengthen our spiritual appetites and longings to Him. And to protect us from becoming satisfied with the natural and the temporary things. God, I'm not going to be settling for the natural. I want the supernatural. I'm pushing in for you. I'm trusting you to move in our nation in Jesus' name. It helps me bring my flesh. You know, my food, my whatever it is that I'm drawn to. Under submission. In Psalm 69, 10 and 1 Corinthians 9, 27. It is there to help me humble myself before God. And say, God, I'm not doing it on my own. I'm trusting you. Psalm 35, 40, uh, 13. To combat temptation and spiritual opposition. Whatever temptation you got and spiritual opposition like Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 3. Because Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. During the time of repentance and intercession in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 1, verse 48. And so I want to ask you, are you prepared to allow God to move in your life? Are you prepared to allow the Spirit of God to come and help you and assist you and bring you to a place of destiny and purpose? Because I know that God has got a plan for our nation. I know that God has got something supernatural for us. And so tonight, I've shown you how that when we pray, we, angels are released and God moves when we stand in unity. God says that He commands a blessing when we stand in unity. I've shown you that when we fast, we get sensitive to the Spirit and God will work and that we will hear what God wants for us and what to do next. But let's get practical. What is the focus of this weekend? Where are we? What are we going to do? Firstly, I want to say this. We cannot allow things to continue going the way it is. Right now, we are dealing with a reactive mindset. What do I mean by that? Whenever the government does something, then we do something. All right? I want to tell you right now. We need to be ahead of this thing. We need to be setting the pace as believers. We can't sit down and keep on going with objections and raising the alarms and keep on pushing. We will. But it's time that the church shift. It's time that the church of Jesus Christ start taking these things head on. And so this weekend, I've called on some intercessors. And I'm going to ask God to use these intercessors to bring the word to the nation and pray the following through. Number one, we are going to pray that the demonic influence on our leaders get restricted. I want to tell you right now, there are many of our leaders that are inquiring from some gomers and witch doctors 
and getting all sorts of things to help them with their positions and their agenda. But I want to tell you right now, when we come and raise the standard, we can restrict that influence. In fact, some of the, the uh, members of parliament have said to me, that when certain members walk into the, into the house, they physically feel the demonic presence coming in. I want to tell you right now, we can turn this thing around in Jesus' name. Whatever has been dealt with or agreements that they have had, we can restrict it, we can cut this thing off, so that when they're coming to the house, they are in their sound mind and not under a demonic influence, and they are not hearing any demonic um, advice. Because our nation needs the Spirit of God to work. We need to see the blessing of the Lord upon our nation. And so saints, I want to ask you. When we come and pray the restriction of the demonic, I'm going to ask you please to get ready that you are fasting with us, that you are standing, that we are coming with an urgent, fervent prayer. The Bible says that the fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. That word fervent means red hot or glowing liquid. It's like when they've melted iron. And you see that red liquid poured out like lava. That is the extent of a fervent prayer. And when we come with fervent prayer, this is not just, oh Lord, yes, we just agree. No, it's God, I thank you that I agree with the statement. That I know that you're going to do something supernatural for our leaders. That no matter what the devil has planned over their lives, it will not come to pass because we are pushing in with God. And so we are going to stand together and we are going to pray. And so the first thing is we're going to restrict that evil work that is over our leaders. And we are going to be fervent about it and we are going to believe God for the supernatural. Number two, we are going to pray, as Romans 13, 1 says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authority, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Now you can say, how on earth did we end up with the leaders that we did? It is based on the people. We get the government we ask for. If the church of Jesus Christ is not fighting and praying, you are going to end up with what you are not praying for. Because I tell you right now, the demonic is at work and Satan's not going to stand back for you. And so tonight I want us to get ready for this. I want us to get ready and understand that everybody in parliament, everybody in government has been appointed by God. The problem I've got is, is that we deal with this incorrectly. We come and we start accusing or moaning and bickering. I want to tell you right now, God has made it very clear that when we moan and bicker and carry on, and we have no way of changing it, you are just like um, Aaron and uh, Miriam when they started to complain against Moses. Remember this, God has placed the government and He has appointed them and you have no right to go against God's appointment. So, how do we deal with this? Point number two. We are going to call on God and say, God, you appointed this government. We're asking you to intervene and we're calling on your name and saying, God, you come and you deal with this. It's not for us to deal with. It's for you, God. You have said that they are appointed by you. And so, God, we're asking you 
to deal with this in Jesus' name. Now God will start dealing with them. You might find that they wake up in the middle of the night, have an encounter. Look at the king. Remember when uh, Moses lied about his wife? Said it was his sister. God spoke to him in the middle of the night. God can speak to anybody. But the problem is this. The church of Jesus Christ has no right to criticize the government or the individuals. Publicly, we have no right to judge. What we do have a right to is call on the living God and say, God, this is your concern. This is your problem. And we're asking you to come and intervene in Jesus name. We're asking you to come and turn the hearts of the ungodly king in the direction in where they should go. And so I want to say that as we start coming as a nation and we start seeking God, God is going to answer the prayers of the saints. But at the same time, we are releasing God to move in our nation and in our government. And then number three, what we are going to be focusing on is this. We are going to call things that are not as if they were. We are going to release the promises of God over this nation. We are going to release the prophetic words over this nation. We are going to declare what God has for this nation. And we are going to bring this nation before God. But as it stands right now, we cannot have this continue anymore. We cannot allow the devil to come and have his way and the church stay silent in prayer. Now, I must say that there are many intercessors that have been praying. They've been carrying this nation for years. And I'm not saying the intercessors are not trying. But there are many Christians who only come to pray when there is a major crisis. Well, I want to tell you right now, this is a crisis. You cannot believe on how many fronts I'm busy trying to sit down and sift through and say, what do I bring publicly? What do I sit down and pray to intercessors? There is stuff happening like you can't believe. But we need to come and bring this into a spiritual dimension. All right? And we are going to pray this thing. People are asking me about um, what kind of prayer. Please release a prayer. No, I want you to stand in agreement with, with the prayers that are going to be recorded. In other words, not recorded when we broadcast the prayers. At 6, 6.30 in the morning, 12 o'clock, and at 6 p.m. Those individuals are prayer warriors. They know how to seek God. They know how to pull down strongholds. They are ready for this. And so we are going to call on God. And we are going to bring the power and the anointing of God down into our nation. But I'm going to ask you to stand with us. Prepare yourselves for this week. And when we get to Friday, stand in agreement with fervent prayer. And say, God, we are ready for this. We are going to see the power of God move. We are going to see the glory of God come upon our nation. And we thank you for the destiny of South Africa. And so saints, I want to thank you for being part of this. I want to thank you for sitting down and making yourselves available and reporting for duty. But I want to ask you, please spread the word out about the fasting, about the prayer time. Please go onto my Facebook page, Dr. Arthur Frost, and go and share the, the video call that I did for this afternoon. All right? We are called the nation for a national prayer. Go and share that and get that out as far as possible. Get it to every leader that you know. Every small group that you know. Let's get this nation praying and let's stand in the gap for what God has to do. Because when we stand in the gap, God is going to come by His power and turn things. But the saints need to stand in agreement. I want to thank you for just being available. And I want to bless you this evening. 
Lord, I thank you right now that as we report for duty, Lord, I thank you that you're going to move by your spirit in a mighty way in our lives. Lord, that we are not going to be the same again. But God, I pray right now that as we go day in and day out in this prayer time, Father, I pray that we will carry an anointing. Lord, that we will declare that our nation will be saved in Jesus' name. And Lord, that the demonic will be restricted in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the power of God and the blessing that you have in store for South Africa. In Jesus' mighty name. And we pray right now that you are going to do something miraculous and supernatural in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to bless you. I want to encourage you. I want to say thank you so much for being part of this. We are going to stand together and we are going to pray together in Jesus' mighty name. So God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for communion. Amen. God bless you. Love you lots. Bye-bye.